I'm probably the less expert uh, among all of you. I'll just try to talk about the French policy and uh, maybe say a few words and answer questions uh, at the end uh, of that uh, talk. So uh, in French Federation, uh, we, we have a special situation. You have probably uh, following the events for the last three weeks that we have in France. France is a very central uh, country uh, since Napoleon. And we have a central government governing most of the things. And uh, today uh, we have uh, a policy which is the chess federation is among public policies to try to uh, go to the society. So I will just uh, say that the game of chess is recognized as a sport in France only for the last 18 years. But we, we are not member of the National Olympic Committee yet. They have asked us to affiliate after a French member is member of FIDE. So that's what they have asked just in October. Uh, Malcolm, for your information. Well, you've managed that then. <laughs> <laughs> so chess contributes, of course, to the education. And uh, our Minister of Education has been a rector. So he has been in Guyane, which is uh, French Guyane in uh, uh, the Americas, and in Créteil. Uh, and Jérôme Moffra, who is here, has been working with him for so many years. And he is also favoring very much because he believed that chess is an extraordinary tool uh, uh, in France. So he's now the Minister of Education in France and he's, let's say, supporting uh, this uh, quite actively. Uh, of course, uh, in France we want to have what we say responsible citizens. And uh, John was talking about uh, being having good human beings uh, before and I think chess is bringing a part of this. Also, we need social bond. We need also uh, uh, to have social cohesion. What we, do we mean by that? We mean, as was saying uh, Jesper before, no problem of religion, no problem of culture, no ethnical problem. Everybody can play chess. There is no uh, problems of being uh, CSP++ or coming from difficult areas. So everybody can mix in that. And the French government is also looking, and the French Federation is also playing its role in this cohesion of the society. Just to give you an information, the French Federation is about 60,000 uh, members. Among them, 40,000 are below 20. So this is uh, something quite important uh, for, for the use. It's 900 clubs. It's structured in a way like France is structured with a very strong central administration. And also then you have the leagues, then you have the departments, and then you have the clubs. So we are a tool, I would say, uh, in the public policy in France also. We are not only the narrow thing, which is chess competition. Jesper said that and he was playing chess before and 10 years ago he went to another direction. So now this is what we're trying to do also in France, is also to go to a broader direction, a transversal direction, so that we can use it really as a tool for the society and not only as a narrow competitive thing, which is a very important because this is the basis that structures the federation. Without that, it doesn't exist. But with only that, it remains weak. So we, we have uh, uh, created, as we say, because in France, it's a very complex country. I, am, I know that you all know France and you know that we are very special people. So, <laughs> we are very, very special, and so, in fact, uh, we have uh, different administrations that are, let's say, directing, controlling all aspects of sports in the society. So, USEP, it's, uh, in fact, the primary school sport federation, which is under the National Minister of National Education, and which, in fact, is guiding all sport activities in the primary schools. So we are the specialists of chess as French Chess Federation. So we have signed with USEP an agreement because, as you see, they have a network with a lot of kids who are there, a lot of adults that are licensees, and it's important to go there. On the other hand, we are recognized as sport, but we are not 
In France, we say fédération délégataire. And fédération délégataire means the government is paying for the employees to contribute to that development. So we have to find our own resources as a French Federation, but at the same time, we have to develop the signatures, the partnerships with USEP, which is, of course, very important for us to be recognized and to grow up within the primary schools. Otherwise, the teachers would not go. Jesper said 1,200 schools, 7,000 uh, teachers. In France, we are not yet uh, reaching that uh, kind of things because it's very partial and it's uh, we are, I don't know if you are talking only about primary school or in general but this is USEP is only about the primary school so we have the secondary school so everything is segmented in France it's called uh, UNSS uh, Union Nationale du Sport Scolaire so to uh, say it. and as you can see they have 1,150,000 members <laughs> So when you come into the secondary school in France, when you are a, a kid, I mean a, a teenager between 12 and 18, you can be a member of that, and when you practice sport, you do it that way. So now, also the French Federation has signed with UNSS an agreement so that we can collaborate, uh, we can uh, train arbiters, we can uh, help also their teachers, and UNSS, in fact, is... Uh, represented by 30,000 physical uh, education uh, sport monitoring. So it's not easy for them who are only on physical sports to go and to understand chess, which is a sport as well, but some are questioning what kind of sport are you. So that's also the limit uh, of the system. So uh, Jesper was talking about the digital. We tried and we started with UNSS last year because, as uh, we say, the uh, only e-sport, which is a real sport, is chess. Because you were mentioning that through the fact of doing it uh, with the teachers or doing it digitally. Here, they liked very much the idea to use that because, just for your information, in France we have now 18 million uh, people who are practicing sports through federations. It's 15 million different people, but 18 million people because some are practice, practicing two or three sports. And we have 30 million people who are practicing outside of federations. So it's a total of, let's say, 45 million out of the 65, 66 million uh, France population. And in fact, in, uh, I had a discussion, and uh, they are very scared that this drops down for the 2024 games to 10 million only people for many reasons reasons that the money is not there anymore uh, the growth of the economy is not there anymore there are many things that are happening and also the e-game is increasing in popularity and so people have the tendency and the young generation to play other sports so bringing chess into the picture is something that can unite in fact, strengthen the sport movement because they need badly to have people. And also, we are the only sport that is uh, an e-sport and also a presential sport that can take place. So it means we can minimize costs at the beginning and we can have, anyway, big gathering with thousands of people at the end if we decide to do so. So this is, again, as Jesper was saying, a strength that we have in the world of chess and we could uh, use. So we did something with UNSS last year, and we had about, this year we will have more students who played, in fact, it's digital games uh, through different uh, secondary schools. We have also uh, a very uh, fantastic network, uh, which is called AEFE, Agence de l'Enseignement du Français à l'Étranger, which is uh, the schools that are outside France, but that are teaching also in French. And we have 137 countries on five continents. Uh, here we have five continents, we have 25 countries. Uh, we have 492 schools and 350,000 students. This means this is an incredible network. And I have, we have also signed a partnership with IOFE where we can play, uh, propose, uh, train, and do activities with them. So, in fact, the French Federation is trying through those partnerships 
to bring chess more to schools and to show and to explain because our problem, you were talking about communication, our problem is not, we're not communicating enough, we are only uh, being on our narrow competitive uh, skill that we have, uh, that build all FIDE, that build all federations, but there's not enough today as a tool to be propagated in the society. So we are working on, with them, of course, to make online championships because they are representing uh, a part of the world and we could be uh, doing something with all those kids who will participate. And you can imagine that this is very strong, uh, let's say, pilot to try and to start with that we could use in all those uh, countries. Uh, so we also, this is a little bit out of the scope, but we are also, as we are working with public policy, uh, we have signed a, as well a partnership with the Minister of Justice uh, for the Department of Youth Protection. In fact, as you can see, there are about 150,000, here it's 137, and we have 1,500 establishment to try to reiterate, to bring back those youth to the normal life. And they believe that chess is one of the tools that can help those youths also to start to be on the board, to communicate. And we have signed an agreement on 14th of April of that year with also the, uh, the Ministry of Justice regarding that. In fact, also this is helping a lot the French Federation because who is going to conduct that? It will be clubs. We have 900 clubs. So it means we have... Uh, a network on the territory, French territory, and uh, the Minister of Justice is going to pay for the hours and uh, going to pay even for the subscription of those youngsters who would be part of the French Federation to play the competitions. So this is a real uh, uh, public policy. Again, chess is a tool. It's not done to play chess competition. The government is ready to spend money if you're helping the society to live better and to be in a better condition. So this is one, one of the things also we have been uh, for uh, that year. And we are continuing uh, with the other departments. So, merci beaucoup.